Up until recently, the global development was based on two pillars. First, that's the freedom of entrepreneurship, trade and investment. It is enshrined in the rules adopted by the players on the international arena. And secondly, the resilience and predictability of these rules, which is supported by very, by very clear legal mechanisms. Based on these values and principles, the global economy, despite um, the recognized problems, has managed to achieve impressive results to put on the development track the overwhelming majority of the international players, the majority of countries. However, today we do not see the erosion. Regrettably, we see the true demolition of those principles. The system of multilateral cooperation built over decades instead of a natural needed evolution is now being broken, roughly broken. The new rule nowadays is to break the rules. Market openness and honest competitiveness is pushed out by withdrawals, restrictions, and sanctions. You can apply different terms, but the essence is the same. They are now an official tool of trade policy for many countries. And other states just have to adapt to that to respond to use mirror measures. I would like to draw your attention to one very poignant fact. Just recently, every meeting of the leaders of the G20 or um, other summits ended in a joint statement on the non-introduction of new protectionist barriers. Indeed, these statements um, did not have any legal force, but new barriers in trade are still being erected. Today, we cannot even decide on even such symbolic steps to be taken. Another example, the decrease in the speed of um, new agreements on free trade. This process started some five or seven years ago. In 2010, the WTO notified more than 30 such agreements, and last year, only 10. And I have a feeling that they are going to keep falling in numbers. And if previously the classical protectionism was rampant, such as additional import duties, technical requires, requirements, or hidden subsidies, then today we are talking about a new edition of protectionism on the use of the evidently far-fetched excuses on references to the interests of national security, and all that for what, in order to crash competitors or to extort concessions. This sanction and restriction spiral is only worsening, and it hits more and more countries and more and more companies, including those who are sure that they would be immune to this regime of trade restrictions, that such problems would pass them by. However, the arbitrariness and connivance breed the desires to use restriction tools time and time again, left and right, on any occasion. Despite the political loyalty, the talks of solidarity, the previous agreements, and the multi-year cooperation agreements. Here we have many representatives of business, and you're well aware that the withdrawal of one of the parties to the contracts the disruption of the agreement translates into significant risks and expenses. This is the axiom of global business practice. And on the global scope, such behavior of states might lead to most negative and disruptive consequences. And, and even now, when the slight of the existing norms and the loss of mutual trust might be exacerbated by the unpredictability, the turbulence of the colossal technological changes. Such a turn of events might lead to a systematic crisis, which the world has not yet seen. It is going to affect all of the players of the world economic arena. Global distrust puts into question the prospects of the global growth. The logic of the economic selfishness does not combine well with today's specialization of countries and companies with forging complex global industrial chains that might throw the global economy back into the far past, to the times when people lived off the land, when 
people had to produce everything themselves. And this undeniably leads to the fall in efficiency of global economy, to losses in labor productivity, to wasting the advances of science and technology, which could have changed the people's life for the better.